Now, I realize you are not supposed to get too excited about a true freshman quarterback making his first start against a group of five team. Screw that, Ari. I'm getting very excited about Dylan Raiola. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about somebody who is coming into a program that probably should have been at Ohio State or Georgia. That's where they those types of players end up. He was committed to both of those places. Nebraska is able to pull him in. Like, this isn't just, oh, we got a quarterback that should be pretty good. Like, this is the face of a program. This kid is the reason why people are going to be tuning into Nebraska football that wouldn't have otherwise been watching them. And frankly, part of the reason why I'm excited about this season and in the direction of the sport, because the spread of talent is going to a more diverse set of places. So when you talk about somebody who's got these skill sets and has been compared to Patrick Mahomes because of his body type and arm strength coming out there and chucking the ball down the field in a 40 to seven win over UTEP, like I saw people joking about this on Twitter on Twitter during the game, but like, when is he the best Nebraska downfield thrower of all time? <laughs> like, I mean, like it sounds really funny to say right now, but Tommy Frazier was pretty good at it, but they were so scared of what he could do in the triple option. Yeah. You had, you know, single coverage on everything. I, 80 yard dart dart darts down the field. Isn't what really comes to mind when I think about Tommy Frazier, but you know, like, yeah, there's a, there's a play in that game where there's a rusher that comes free at Riola mm -hmm. and he's got a guy streaking down the right sideline. And the guy's in his face. He knows he's going to get hit, and he delivers a seed. It was it was amazing. But the the one I just kept going back and watching again is the one where he's there's a little bit of traffic, so he kind of he, he moves out to his right a little bit, kind of ducks, and then three quarter delivers a strike. And it, it that was the the arm slots. We, Mahomes has got a lot of quarterbacks trying that stuff. You know, every every quarterback wants to be Patrick Mahomes. They all want to try to to throw from here and then come down and throw from here. And it doesn't always work. But with Raiola, it does look very natural. And like in this case, it looked instinctual, which, again, Nebraska has not had an instinctual thrower of the football in a long time. Well, let me just tell you my just general thought process about talent in college football and how it relates to Dylan Raiola. When you have a great player in college, I don't know what the percentage is. 85% of the time, you can see it very quickly, very mm -hmm. immediately. You don't really have a lot of players who develop for two or three years. You don't see anything. They they got onto the field early in their career. They weren't very good, and then they develop into a superstar. Like when people hit, people hit. So it's like, I don't want to get too excited about Dylan Rayola, but like we're talking about somebody who couldn't have had more hype. I mean, the only player that's had more hype around them in the last two or three recruiting cycles is Arch Manning. Like we're talking about that level of hype coming out and delivering a, a very easy win, uh, 238 passing yards, two touchdowns, downfield throws, escaping pressure, doing instinctual things like that word is perfect because instinctual is what makes quarterbacks great. And I think he has obviously the NFL pedigree with the family that he comes from, but also to the measurables to be a very good player. So he's the face of a program, but he didn't. It's so much better to be having this conversation after a blowout over a group of five team than like, oh, well, give him some time. He's going to be fine. Right. Like he's, he's the defense will carry him. Yeah, yeah. Right. So and obviously, you know, coming up, they've got a pretty big game that everyone's going to be watching. Yeah. And I think this is a nice tune up for that. Well, and the other thing is they're playing Colorado. Shador Sanders will be there. That's a real NFL quarterback on the other side of the field. So you can you can kind of compare and contrast the yeah. two. And, you know, for Shador, it'll be a, a challenge because obviously Nebraska's defense is more athletic than the one he saw against against North Dakota State, but for Dylan Riola, I thought Colorado, their their run defense was actually pretty good, and so they may take away some things in Nebraska's run game and force Dylan Riola to throw to beat him, and we're going to see if he can. I thought also Matt Rule talking about Riola, now he, he was trying not to be too effusive in his praise, but he did notice some things, and not he was not talking about throws. He was talking about how Riola managed plays how he checked the things let's hear matt rule there was some good and there was some bad right so like the, the best one was the like he 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 three-way checked he he three-way checked the long run by emmett right like he checked it and then they kind of moved and he checked it back um and so then he checked it again and got us to that run so like when you have a freshman that's checking and reloading things a that's a, that's an unbelievable job by sat putting those kinds of things in Great job by Glenn teaching it. Great job by Dylan learning it. And then also all the other, the O-line and all those guys being on the right call. There were some other things, like there was a third and two where 
he hurt RPO. The receivers didn't, you know. So there were some of those moments, right? I thought. I thought the biggest thing was, you know, we were, I think uh, until that last one, we were like 11 of 16 on, on third down. I think we probably finished 11 of 17 on third down. A lot of those were runs late in the game, but I think we had some really big third down conversions. And then, you know, I, I told you, I told you guys. I think sometimes people think maybe I say things, and I don't really mean them sometimes because you know I say a lot of things. But like with eight seconds left in a timeout to take a shot in the end zone, right? That is saying that we're, we're going to play the way we want them to play someday. And I didn't call a timeout and say, hey, now remember, <laughs> you know, hey, get it up, get it down. And he took a shot and boom. It, it, so we, we, we were, I was really happy with that. So I thought for a first game for Dylan, a lot of great things. I think there's a lot of things we have to clean up as a staff. And, um, you yeah, know, we will. And that's the part you don't know with a freshman is when they get in that situation, are they going to do the right things? Will they make the right calls? Will they communicate effectively with their teammates? That part he handled very well. And, I think that's interesting because they don't have to dumb down their offense for Dylan Riola. And I would say probably it was a different kind of dumbing down that Nebraska had to do last year because there were things that the quarterbacks couldn't necessarily do physically. Riola can do all that stuff. The question was, how much can you put on him in terms of scheme? And it seems like he can handle it. Yeah, and I do think that we do speak about about this a lot when you talk about recruits who come from football families, but you're talking about a person that has been uh, in the family of football his entire life with people who have played it at the highest level, including his father. So um, that definitely helps with the IQ stuff. But the one thing that I, I can't ever stop thinking about when it comes to this Nebraska program is that when you think about Matt rule, what he took over uh, the team that was just, the butt of every joke, losing one possession games in the most unfathomable ways to come into a program and then get a legacy five-star prospect at the quarterback position that was once committed to Ohio state. That was once committed to Georgia. Talk about blasting off from the beginning. Like th there's no better way to start your entire run as the head coach there. And like, if Dylan Rayola hits, and I don't want to be hyperbolic, but if he becomes the player that we think he could be, like that could be the beginning of the rebuild that Nebraska has been waiting for for decades. Well, and we've said this over and over, especially since the NIL era started. The player who does bring Nebraska back is going to be a legend. And I think that was part of the recruiting pitch to Dylan Rayola. Obviously, yeah. there were other factors there. There's the legacy, there's NIL, there's everything. but. There's Runza. There is Runza. <laughs> there are chili and cinnamon rolls. But the the guy who makes Nebraska relevant on the field again, because Nebraska is relevant off the field. Like when we talk about Nebraska, there's a bunch of people who want to watch. There's people who are interested in Nebraska. And obviously the fans are amazing. They love Nebraska. They've suffered so much. But the, the guy who gets them competing, contending again, is going to be a legend in that state. So especially if that person was somebody who could have just gone to Georgia. Right. Right. Cause you, yeah. you could just go to Ohio state. Like Dylan Riola could be at Ohio state right now waiting, you know, see what, what will Howard will play this season. And then he could take over next season. Georgia, same thing. Carson Beck finishing this season. Instead he's at Nebraska as a true freshman and he's out there in the mix. This Colorado game is going to be so much fun. It is going to be the eyes of the whole college football world on Lincoln, Nebraska, because Michigan, Texas is the, is a, a noon Eastern game. This is a night game, and this is the game in that window that everybody's going to be watching. Yeah, and it's I think it's a wonderful opportunity for Nebraska to do something that they can grow from a year ago. Like if you remember the Colorado Nebraska game last year, I was in Tuscaloosa uh, watching it in a hotel room before the Alabama Texas game. And I was just like, when is this program going to defrost? It was dumb penalty. Oh, I see weird, we, weird turnovers and terrible penalties. And it's just like they, with functionality, with competence, absolutely sh could and maybe even should beat this Nebraska. I mean, this Colorado team. Right. Um, there because is going to be throws for the taking for this kid mm. this is going to be a game that everyone watches everybody who co follows college football most people who listen to this show just know who he is because they're in the world but this is the first opportunity for casual fans who don't even realize the significance of this to be like
like, holy crap, who was that? And really, I think there's less pressure on him than there, there is on Colorado and Shadur to show out in this game because Nebraska's still the team with the bowl drought. Colorado's got a bowl drought too, but Shadur's the guy that everybody thinks is going to be the first quarterback off the board in the NFL draft next year. Like, Ryola, it's understandable if a true freshman doesn't play great in this game. I think the pressure squarely on Shadur and the Colorado team. So, but the opportunity go out and let it right. Go out and let it rip if you're Dylan Riola and have some fun. But you're absolutely right. They they have to eliminate the dumb turnovers. We didn't see any of that this time, but that was what killed them in, in the Colorado game last year. Those turnovers right before the half that basically Colorado just took over the game. And if you remember, Andy, during our entire past, you know, hosting a show together. The tenor of the Nebraska conversation in general was not great for Nebraska fans. Like it was, can you believe how they lost this game? This stupid penalty, this weird tone over this, this boneheaded decision. And it's like what a quarterback like this brings to your program is this conversation. It'll, we can actually view the pathway forward. Like yeah. two years ago before, like when Dylan Rayola was committed to Ohio state, if you and I were sitting in this room having a discussion, what is the pathway forward for this Nebraska program that's kind of a no man's land? You couldn't even conceive of the opportunity that they have right now. Like the fact that this is happening and it's coming from somebody with lineage with the program, you couldn't have drawn it up better for them. So go go seize this opportunity. We have a player at Nebraska that makes this program worth watching every week, that makes this program worth talking about, which means more recruits see it. Yep. You know, more people, your your brand is relevant. Not that it ever wasn't. It's the Nebraska, you know, brand. But there is a really big opportunity, not just in this Colorado game, but in, in this program build here that kind of just happened by, by great positioning and happenstance. And hiring the right coach at the right time. Yes. And Matt Rule, obviously, uh, you know, has built programs before. And, you know, I think that we we said this, but like relentless competence at yes. a place that has been consistently – uh, dysfunctional um, could lead to a, a very good season and a bright future. So I'm excited to watch this unfold and I'm, and I'm buying stock in Dylan Rayola. Circus coming to town in Lincoln, Colorado, Nebraska. Cannot wait. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here. So you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on three. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.